All right, so we got 52 orders going out over the weekend, totaling a little over $1,100 in sales on eBay. Stick around to the end of the video to find out what's sold. This vintage geometric shirt sold for $11.97 plus shipping. And this Maurice's women's jacket sold for $17.95 plus shipping. And this cable and gauge women's top sold for $14.95 plus shipping. Hope everyone had an amazing blessed weekend. Some things that I've been going over for the last few weeks has really been the buy back your time paradigm. So I've been spending a lot of times in the business of doing those mundane tasks like the listing, like the shipping, like the sourcing, right? All those conventional ways to grow your business. But I have been feeling like I want to branch out in other areas of the business, be able to work maybe better on my sourcing, building other businesses. So while I have been listing for two and a half years, uh, about 30 to 45 items a day, for the last eight months we've been doing 45 items a day, and I really wanted to look to train an employee, spend a good month training an employee, training someone that can take over the listing process. This is something that's been on my mind for the last few months and always kind of feeling like, oh, you know, they'll never do as good as I can do. What if they make mistakes? What if they ruin the business? And I just was always kind of in fear about that, right? And, and typically I have don't want that mindset. I don't want to stay around in that fearful mindset. So I was like, let's give it a shot. Let's hire someone off Fiverr, someone that has a little bit of experience listing, but I want the listings done in a particular way. And that is where I spent the last three weeks training a lister on Fiverr and being able to pump out listings, 40 cents a listing. And to this point now, the last three weeks, this lady has done listings for me without mistakes and at first it was a grind it was frustrating getting this person to be able to do a listing without a mistake was hard you know because you know i want the titles done a particular way i want the structure of the title the item specifics the photos i want it done a certain way so it just took them some time to be able to build up to that point but i'll tell you what it is a blessing now to be able to have that one and a half to two and a half hours of my day back to now be able to focus on other areas of the business. Maybe I want to improve my sourcing habits. Maybe I want to do a little bit more one-on-one -on -one coaching. So those are the things that I'm really passionate about and I'm so excited that I have found a person to come in and help me with my listings. So these are the things that I'm going through in my business. Maybe you are on the fence about hiring someone for your business and maybe you're just a beginner and you're trying to think down the road, how would you even go about that process? I'll say this, that if you are hesitant one way or another, I say take the leap of faith because you don't know what's on the other side. If I was just in that fearful mindset of like, oh, you know, they'll just never get it, right? I would still be spending about two and a half to three hours a day doing my listings. And now while I speak to you, I have someone doing my listings for me. And this person has now been trainable. They made all the corrections after I made, uh, you know, gave them a heads up but like, hey, this listing, you know, this goes in the NCAA football category. Hey, this is a women's top, not a men's top. Finally getting them trained up to be able to recognize what things are that I'm listing. They're making those corrections. They're fixing their mistakes and they're knocking them out. So what a blessing. I'm telling you that it always pays off to take a leap of faith. At least try. You could always go back and fire the person that you're, you know, not, that's not working out for. But um, for me, this was a great way to just take my business to the next level, free up more time, and be able to do the things that I actually want to do. I love sourcing. I want to be able to get better at it. And that's something that I'm always working on. So this is going to allow me to take that next step. What are you doing in your business that's going to make you take that next step, that, me that next leap into your business? What are you working on? Are you trying to get better at sourcing, trying to get faster at listing? Leave in the comment section down below, and I'd love to help you. These men's jeans by Denizen sold for $8 plus shipping. This women's L.L. Bean top sold for $17.95 plus shipping. 
So these Gap denim jeans sold for $12 plus shipping and also had these vintage Prana shorts sell for $24.95 plus shipping. Love picking up this brand Prana. If you are new to reselling, this is a brand that you're gonna wanna check comps for, but it's a good bread and butter brand to build your business with. I had this women's J Crew kind of trench coat jacket sell for $14 plus shipping. Even though with things still heating up, I'm still seeing an influx of sales when it comes to jackets and sweaters. This is why I'm picking up those items year round, continuing to fill my store with a good even balance of shorts, jeans, jackets, sweaters. So when the volume goes down in those categories due to seasonality, my store remains somewhat consistent year over year. This is kind of a terrible brand here. Wouldn't recommend picking it up, but it is St. John's Bay, a woman pair of jeans, sold for $12.95 plus shipping. So living in the Pacific Northwest, I come across a lot of men's and women's cycling gear. So these are some cycling shorts by Bontrager. They sold for $15 plus shipping. It is $11.110. All right, so put me right here. All right, here we are. Pretty awesome. Love picking up cycling gear. Does sell really well, especially this time of year. This Realtree men's camo shirt sold for $8 plus shipping. So I hear that this reselling market is supposed to double in the next three years, according to ThreadUp's recent analysis. I'll post a link up here where you could check that out. But ThreadUp has basically done a a quick little brief summary on what the market is looking like, their uh, 10th annual update. And they said that the market cap for used pre-owned clothing is supposed to double by 2026. So you can check it out, linked in the description down below, where Marcus Dixon and I are offering a free seven day trial to our eBay coaching program. Combined, we had done $320,000 worth of sales on eBay last year. And our mission is to help you get on your road to six figures and to help capitalize on this trend and this market growing by applying the same principles and strategies that we use in our business today, join dozens of other members, getting value, growing their business, Included in the seven day free trial, you get a free eBay store review as well as access to a reseller spreadsheet. So if you don't decide that you're not getting any value, just cancel before the seven days, that's okay. And if you do like it and want to continue furthering your education, it is just $1 a day after that, as well as we offer more of a one on one private setting every Wednesday where we can work with you for a little bit more. So check it out. We love to see you hit your goals and capitalize on this market growing and growing. We work with you 10 hours a week, helping you along your way. Love to see you there. Here are some men's express jeans sold for $12.95 plus shipping. These could typically go for a little bit higher, especially if it's men's, but these were previously hemmed. So originally a 30, 32, but they were hemmed to be a 30, 25. So when it comes to things like that, I'm gonna make sure that I put that in the condition description as well as the product description to make sure that the buyer knows that these are previously hemmed. So also another thing to do is you could put the actual measurements in the title along with the tag size that it can be helpful as well all right so we had this canyon guide women's plaid button-up shirt sold for 1256 plus shipping and i wanted to get into some questions mike said that he has something to add about putting pictures of the item measurements in your listing so he has just briefly explained that buyers don't read descriptions they hardly look at photos and i do believe yes mike is correct buyers don't read your description. They don't often look at your photos for the correct measurement sizing. As a clothing reseller, we're gonna to want to do the most that we can do to just lower our returns. You don't want to lower your standards because, oh, they don't read the listing. I'm not gonna put the measurements anyways. I just go above and beyond to put as much information as I can to be able to actually and accurately describe my item, you know, so, Mike is just saying, you know, just be aware that most buyers aren't going to be reading your description. They aren't going to be reading or looking at your photos. So be aware that you are going to get returns. That's just part of the game. That is part of the life of running a business is returns happen. But the main part is, is that we need to just do the best that we can to lower the returns.
This Sun Mountain men's jacket sold for $10 plus shipping. These Mark Anthony men's pants sold for $10.77 plus shipping. And these women's and Taylor pants sold for $12.70 plus shipping. Not much of a sale here, but these Eddie Bauer pants sold for $9 plus shipping. These had been listed for a good six months. So six, six, seven, six, right? Six, six, seven, four. All right, here we go. So you can see here, everything is in kind of a sequential order. If you're new to the channel, this is kind of how I store about 7,200 items here on eBay. And yes, linked in the description down below are access to the racks, the boxes, the poly bags, the SKU labels to get you started going from maybe the bin system or items on the floor. If you're looking to get into this system, this is the way to go if you're looking to store large amount of clothing items. And you know, also people use this for shoes as well and I've heard good results. But yeah, this is the way to go as far as speeding up your time, pulling the orders. You could typically pull 50 plus orders within, within the hour, sometimes even 45 minutes. But if you're looking to do, get in that system, you could check it out, linked below, has access to all of the items you would need to building this sequential numerical inventory system. All right, so this Samsonite crossbody bag sold for $10 plus shipping. One of the benefits of having this lister come on is they're able to list a lot of the bags that I've been just putting off from these storage units that I bought last year came with hundreds of bags, messenger bags, totes, um, duffel bags, all of sorts. And just being able to include three to five bags a day in that listing process, they're able to now get those items moved and put them in our store. Um, you really, really not a bag seller, but I do have them and I wanna make use of getting the profits back into the business. Buying more clothing is what we're typically trying to do. But yeah, just really thankful. What a blessing. Um, really being able to list a lot of these items that I typically have avoided for half a year to a full year. So this women's Chico's top sold for $8 plus shipping. I know a lot of people hate on the brand Chico's, but I do sell quite a bit of it and just happy to pick it up for maybe a dollar or less, turn it into $8 plus shipping. All right, I had another question from Stevie Solutions. This is about ChatGPT. It asks, what do I ask ChatGPT for getting product title? What do you do? Product description? I was given an answer on another channel. So I don't use ChatGPT for creating my titles or anything like that. I specifically just use it for product research. I ask also Auto GPT, which is more of an assistant agent that you give it a task and usually it can complete that task for you. So these are the things that I use as tools to help me learn better, more efficiently, just asking broad questions about certain market caps for specific categories on eBay or comparing Poshmark to eBay in sales volume, looking up things on what is trending in current fashion. It's gonna be able to give you at least a, a ballpark figure on what's going on in today's world, being able to really crunch the numbers to give you the data that you need to help grow your business. So for things like writing product descriptions, it could be helpful. So figuring out those simple questions that you might have as a reseller, you're gonna to want to check out ChatGPT, bookmark it, have it open up every day so you're able to have an assistant right there ready to answer any questions for you. Things like, what does salvage denim mean? Um, what does a balloon sleeve mean? What are the most popular dresses that are women wearing right now? You know, things like that, simple stuff. Like, if you ever have a question, you might wanna check with ChatGPT or auto GPT first, and you could be able to get that answer pretty instantaneously rather than going onto a typical Google search and having to look through a bunch of links. So you could check it out. I use it in my workflow daily to be able to help answer simple questions like that. Here's an interesting brand. These are the brand Corniche. These are like some Bermuda shorts that sold for $20 plus shipping. This is one of those storage unit items that are new with tags. Totally a Y2K type of look to these shorts, um, but really just happy to get these items sold as this had been listed for a good eight months. 
always constantly picking up Levi's. Just love to resell them, especially, you know, if I'm paying a dollar or less, I'm going to be picking them up. These sold for $11 plus shipping. These are the skinny 511s. So just happy to get them out of here. Just listed them two days ago. And another brand I'm always picking up, and that's American Eagle. These are some women's mom jeans, size 18, 14876. There we go. So just listed these oh, probably a couple days ago. They even have stains on the back. So bigger sizes obviously do better for me. Uh, American Eagle, you know, size two, size four, size six, not gonna be selling as well as a size 18. Really a nice sale right here, happy with it. All right, we're selling swimsuits. This is a Speedo, $18 plus shipping. It is in 14, seven, something 14748 here we go uh, the beauty of the sequential system so yeah speedo been selling a couple uh speedo products had some board shorts go out how are sales with uh swimming gear for you guys are you picking up swimming gear this time of year uh been selling a good bit of it as it is supposed to be 82 degrees in oregon this week oh my goodness what should we do take a picture all right, so we have these Cole Haan shoes sold for $27 plus shipping. And let's see, we got it right here. So these are pretty small. I think these are like a men's size eight and a half. Cole Haan though is a good brand to be picking up. I do suggest picking up this brand if you see it, if it is a good price point for you. Um, another storage unit sell here. A lot of shoes were in that unit. I'm not picking up shoes anymore. I'm only set up to sell clothing, so hence the board and the mountain of clothes right there. Um, you know, I have all these shoes. As every reseller can relate, Marcus, I know you could relate. Shoes, don't want to list them. <laughs> so yeah, I'm set up for clothes. You know, I don't want to be doing shoes, but since I have the lister now, I might be looking to get some of these shoes photographed over here and then get these items listed and get them out. You know, I did buy them, so it's like I might as well list them, right? Um, but just having that list or do it uh, is gonna really be helping getting those items that, you know, I don't really list on a consistent basis because I do clothing, right? But I do have all these bags here that need to be listed. I have a bag of hats, a bag of hats. Come on, guys. It's like, what am I doing? What am I thinking? I got just money sitting there. I need to be responsible and get these listed, right? So it's like Ben Sherman uh, Castro hats, this really cool fuzzy fur hat here, beanie, uh, bunch of socks, got these pat. If you ever pick up Patagonia socks, especially new, right? Um, they sell really fast. So bunch of stuff I need to organize, get better at, but that's what comes along with buying in bulk. That's kind of the result. It's like, I'm, sh I'm a clothing seller, not a hat seller, but I'll incorporate it, get it listed. Um, just really thankful though too. It, it is a blessing to, to get these items, pay a dollar for them and turn around and sell them for substantially more. Um, that is the blessing of this business is that, you know, you could make a full or a part-time income from living anywhere. You know, I live in the mountains and I'm selling mall brand clothing. So it's kind of like, when people ask what I do, they're, they're usually like shocked because like you live with the goats and you sell clothes and it's like, yeah, you know, we live by a bunch of farms. So people would think that, you know, I'd be probably doing some type of farming work, you know, and it's just not the case. So, hey, hey, another Chico's. Yeah, $22 plus shipping, 14151 So Chico's, I'm always picking up for a dollar or less. Some people pass on it. You know, everyone has a different business model and that's the beautiful part about this type of business is that you may be just picking up stuff with 100% sell through rate. I think as a beginner, that is exactly where you should be headed, picking up just things that sell as fast as possible so you can take profits and invest them back into your business much faster. When you're just starting out, you don't wanna be picking up brands that have 10, 20, 30% sell through rate because you're just gonna be waiting that much longer to get the to get the money out of that item. So when you're just starting out, yes, focus on those really high sell through rates. Then you can also learn the platform in the meantime, know what's good. As your business grows, you're gonna be able to now 
sacrifice a little bit of your quality for quantity and you will be having to pick up maybe those 50% sell through rate, those 30% sell through rate items just to be able to grow your business. So another brand that usually gets laughed about, but I do pick it up from time to time, definitely a slower sell through rate. This is a Jones New York women's top, still sold for $14 plus shipping. Uh, my second most category that we're selling in right now uh, last month and this month has been women's tops. Uh, pretty surprising to me, but I'm happy all that work from photography and all that listing, you know, all the variety of women's tops is finally starting to pay off. So this brand here, H&M, not really listing too much of this anymore. It is an older item. These are some men's pants sold for $8 plus shipping. But I'm going to show you why this bin system has been abandoned and I went to the sequential inventory system. This is D20, 2953. So D20 is all the way on the bottom right there. I'm going to have to unstack all of these just to get to my item down there versus pulling the items on shelves like that a lot quicker, a lot easier. Let's check it out and see what we could do here. I could probably do it all one handed, but nope. Um, but also, everyone starts somewhere, and I think starting you know, in bins is just fine. So, um, but I think eventually as your business grows into a couple thousand items, you might want to just do a self evaluation and go, am I wanting to lift hundreds of bins every day to find the items that I need? Just love selling this brand. I know it's such a simple brand, but it's just the pair of Ralph Lauren cargo shorts sold for $17 plus shipping. Most of my business is built on these simple brands that most people pass up. But selling a lot more shorts. These are ripstop shorts, so a little bit more value there. But you'd be surprised. Simple brands. You, you see here, all simple, nothing crazy right here. Simple brands paying the bills. And this Maurice's Women's Flowy Top sold for $12.55 plus shipping. God bless you, Maurice's. This brand is making a comeback. Uh, not really, but these are some vintage Dockers made in USA, sold for $14.95 plus shipping. Typically, I'm passing on this brand, but if it is vintage, made in USA, paper tag, I'm going to consider put, picking it up. This Buffalo David Bitten shirt sold for $12 plus shipping. Another good brand to be picking up is this brand Theory. These are just some simple women's pants sold for $15 plus shipping. This simple button-up shirt called Cafe Luna, it's like a simple Hawaiian shirt, sold for $12.56 plus shipping. These women's Nike Oregon Ducks leggings sold for $22 plus shipping. Living by the University of Oregon, I'm finding a ton of Oregon Ducks gear, specifically made by Nike. I'm always picking it up, especially if it's around a dollar. So this women's button-up jacket sold for $14 plus shipping. I know it's not a lot, but still, these sales do add up, guys. If you're selling 20, 30, 40 items a day and you're making five, 10, 15 dollars profit, that does add up substantially. But the only way to really get there is through your consistency in your listing and your habits and picking up the same products over and over again. This Timberland sweater sold for $14 plus shipping. In that storage unit came with so much Kenneth Cole and Timberland. Not the best brand, but at the same time, it did end up selling though. See the SKU is 7013. That is literally like a year ago. So I don't typically pick up this brand. It's a Walmart brand, but the brand is Athletic Works. Uh, sold for $12 plus or $10 plus shipping. This item right here um, also came from a bulk buyout I did from a fire evacuation center I did last year where there was 10,000 pounds of clothing that really was meant for evacuees, but they had gotten the help. They had all gotten the resources uh, met. So after a few years, this center had closed down and they were looking to get rid of a lot of the uh, clothing donations. So that was a crazy, I mean, I, I just finished sorting through all those clothes. So that was uh, interesting and I probably won't do that again. Um, just because I didn't find so many good items to make it worth it. Um, I did find quite a bit of vintage items. This, these are the types of brands that were in there, but 
you know, a good bit of vintage as well. Though, you know, looking back on it, the time that I spent doing all that, was it really worth it? Probably not in the grand scheme of things, though I did learn a lot. So that is invaluable in that lesson right there is that, yeah, you may be paying, a, you know, spending more time on a project than you really need to. But it, after it's all said and done, you learn so much about like, OK, I'm not going to do that again or OK, I will do that again. I guess in the grand scheme of things, I should have probably hired someone just to go through it all for me. But a brand I do love to pick up is the brand Diesel. And these are new tags, Diesel Camo, uh, Corduroy, Diesel Camo Cargo Pants, sold for $44 plus shipping. So if you all have questions, um, I want to be able to provide value by answering these questions in the videos. So you can leave comments down below, whatever question you may have with whatever you see here in this warehouse and how I go about these systems, please comment so I can provide some more value to you guys as you watch these videos. Cause you can see here, all these sales are pretty boring. You know, it's like, yeah, Bo's not selling nothing crazy that I'm gonna be running out to the thrift store to go find, right? So just kind of, you know, I want to be able to give you guys value. So drop comments so I can answer those in videos to come. These men's Wrangler jeans that I just listed a day ago sold for $18 plus shipping. So as things continue to grow in your business, um, you should always be thinking about who am I going to hire to do my processes now so it frees up time to work in other areas of the business. That's why the buy back my time principle has just been stuck with me over these last few months. What can I do that I'm currently doing? How can I train those processes out? So someone that I can hire and I can go focus on other areas of the business. I believe that everyone in reselling should be trying to grow their business in some way. And that doesn't mean picking up more items, listing more items. That could just be growing as a person, reading books, getting better at personal development, figuring out how, what good habits that you're gonna pick up that you can apply to your business, to your relationships, to your family. That's what I see growing as. You don't always have to be like, how can I grow my business? Your business will grow if you grow as a person. So you'll learn new habits, you'll learn new things that you should be implementing in your business to be able to grow that business. So for me, it was like, buy back your time, buy back your time. That was flashing red, like flashing sirens for me. So to the buy back your time was how can I get one of my processes figured out by an employee so I could go focus on other areas of the business. So the listing process always took me between one and a half to two and a half hours to complete 45 listings. Now I'm able to buy back my time every day and to be able to have this person trained up to be able to give me those hours to go focus on other things. So for, for me, I just always think that you should be looking to grow as an individual, grow as a person to be able to ride the waves of change. You know, everyone's thinking, oh, it's a recession, it's coming. Who cares? Just keep growing as a person and you will see that no matter what the season of the economy is, you're going to be getting better. So that's just kind of where my at, I'm at with my hiring process. I hired a person to also sort items for me, even though it's going to be raising my cost of goods. After sorting the last bale, I was just thinking in my mind, you know, this is just too much, like as far as sorting through five, six, seven thousand pieces a month to be able to what lower my cost of goods from a dollar uh, 77, which is what it was last year to 50 cents. That's great. But also at the same time, I'm spending six, eight hours a week of backbreaking work just to come up with that savings. So rather just pay someone a dollar an item. So I'm able to go 177 to a dollar or less that's gonna be really nice and I'm not having to sort through a lot of items. So that's kind of where I'm at. I hope that can be helpful for you if you're thinking about hiring an employee. I say take the leap of faith, but don't do it before you haven't mastered that process. I think master that process completely and then go train someone that can do it. All right, so we had this bag just sell. It is basically a tote canvas bag backpack sold for $79 plus shipping. $69 plus shipping by the brand Clutterworks. Not familiar with that, but it's a climbing, hiking gear brand. So very happy with this sale. What a blessing to get these bags start moving out of the store. 
Uh, if you want to know what else is selling in our eBay store and the types of brands that I'm looking to pick up on a daily basis, you're going to want to check out this video right here where it goes over the top 50 brands that I'm constantly on the lookout. You could see it and hopefully it could be helpful for you the next time you go out sourcing so you can find some of those brands as well. I hope you have a blessed rest of the week and take care.